Hey, I am Mustafa Sharif, and thank you for listening or watching Urbanistica podcast slash talks. This is going to be a great episode. We're going to talk about circular consumption. We're going to talk about the White Monday. I have all the pleasure to welcome my guest from the Swedish Association of Responsible Consumption, Alexandra Davidson. Welcome to Urbanistica podcast. Thank you so much. I'm really, really happy to join this podcast. How are you doing, Alexandra? Uh, I'm I'm well. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really well. There are very strange times now with the coronavirus, of course, but I'm doing good and uh, cross my fingers, it will continue that way. Yes, hopefully. I see everyone is home now and you have very beautiful place, greenery all around the place behind you. Yes. I'm a I'm a crazy plant lady. <laughs> <laughs> it's very it's very visible, Alexandra. <laughs> Thank you. You know, actually, this one right here. Yeah. That one is thirty years old. I don't know what what it's called in English, but I inherited it from my grandmother, and I'm really, really, really proud about it. Wow. Then I guess you you're so careful with this, right? <laughs> Yes, but the other day I broke like no. I broke it off a bit, and then I put this piece, you know, in a in a vase. I'm like, oh my god. Well, yeah, I think that's how we should take care of our planet as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Yes, Alexander, you have a great story to tell today. But first, tell us your story. Who is Alexandra Davidson? Who is Alexander Davidson? Uh, that's an interesting question. <laughs> it's, really, it's always it's always hard to answer that. But I'm a 29 year old woman living in Stockholm. I work as the secretary general for the Swedish Association for Responsible Consumption. Uh, I have a dog. Mm, I love my friends. I love plants and yeah, I don't know. I'm a, I'm an, an eternal optimist and I'm very ambitious. That's great. And what are you passionate about? I'm very passionate about like uh, circular consumption, of course, but also communication and PR and also creative stuff like popping ideas for campaigns. And uh, I'm really passionate about this sounds like a total cliche, I know, but to make like a positive change, like a positive contribution here uh, on earth yeah. well that's 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 great we need more people like you but tell me how did it start from the beginning like when you were young what did you study how, where did you work before you end up as a <clears throat> yeah I started <clears throat> sorry I started working uh, when I was 14 like I'm um, uh, in a restaurant and a hotel, I grew up uh, part of my life at a farm, actually, in Sweden's smallest town. That's not where I'm from. And then I moved home uh, when I was really young. I was about to turn 16. And uh, I studied an international um, education. And then I continued that uh, in my bachelor and my master's. I have a bachelor in international politics and economics with a minor in economy and then a master in global studies. Um, but how did I end up here? Like <laughs> when I was, when I was younger, I said, I'm going to be the next foreign minister of Sweden, like a minister of secretary for international. Affairs. How do you say that? You, you get me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then my mentor in upper secondary school, she told me, yeah, maybe you should uh, become a diplomat then. And I'm like, yeah, maybe I should. And then she said, like, yeah, an internship at the United Nations headquarters in New York is a good way to go. So for seven years, I aimed for that goal. Uh, and then uh, in 2013 and 14, I got an internship. Wow. wow, that's York. crazy. That's crazy, Alexandra. <laughs> yeah. They took like I told you in the beginning, I'm ambitious. So if I have a goal, I make sure to reach it. And then and I did this fellowship in Rome at the WFP program. 
and then I came back home to Sweden and then I landed this job, like this dream job. It like it doesn't even feel like a job. Wow, that's amazing. I can I can see the the energy in your eyes when you're talking about this. Yeah. It's really mm-hmm. it's really cool to see people in love with their job. But as you say, it's then it's not not a job really. It's more than mm-hmm. a joyful yeah. moments to, to spend in life. Yeah, exactly. Like I pinch my arm almost every day like that I get to do this because it's so aligned with what I resonate with in my heart and in my core, you know? Yeah. But um, yeah, sustainability has, has like grown upon me during the years. Uh, like I made a huge transformation the past 10 years or so. Yeah, that's, that's great. And how long have you been working in the association? Uh, for almost four and a half years now. Cool. So a kind of senior, or you are, or what do yeah. you have? You have ten years of? No, oh, no, no. I don't have ten years experience of sustainability. No, not working experience. But yeah, I had my first like I had my first leader like leadership job when I was twenty two at the municipality in Udvalla, wow. and uh, and that's. I don't know when you count as a senior. Yeah, it it it's different uh, in each uh, fields, like three years, five years, ten years. Well, anyway, it's more about the impact you made as a junior or senior. It's yeah. impact, the action who counts, which counts. Yeah, totally agree. Yes. Well, great. How would you like to start? Would you, would you like to start from the white Monday or from the circular consumption? Uh, I don't know. You choose. <laughs> let's let's go for the White Monday. It's a very catchy name. I am interested in. Yeah. Uh, so White Monday is a circular campaign. Uh, it started in 2017, uh, and the founder is Henning Gilberg. He also owns a company, Refamera. It's like a clothing repair company. So I cannot take the honor for funding this amazing campaign but um, I organized it uh, together with my team at uh, Responsible Consumption and Henning and other people as well yeah and whose idea was it from the beginning Henning Henning's idea Henning has, yeah. so in 2017 he sat with his colleague and they played a little game like they played uh, the opposite game uh, of Black Friday because you know, we cannot continue to consume as much as we do in the in the way we do. Like it's harmful, um, and we need to we need to take care of the stuff we have. So he played the opposite game. You know, with Yin and Yang. You know, the yes, yeah, yeah. Longer. And in the middle of Yin and Yang, there is Tao or Dao. I cannot remember. <laughs> and so they were playing around. Like, what's the total opposite of Black Friday? Yes. Okay. The opposite of Black Friday is built on pretty much linear consumption, like mm. new stuff on sale, basically. Um, and the opposite of linear consumption is circular consumption. The opposite of black is white. Oh, white. Yeah. The opposite of Friday is yeah Monday. <laughs> so hence the name White Monday for this campaign. And um. Yeah, I'm. I'm just gonna go on and on. You have to. Yes. Yeah. I. I th- no. I think I will never stop you because this is very interesting story. And so you, you, they, they got the idea and together you started this campaign. Is it only in Sweden or was it international? No. So in 2017, it was only in Sweden. Uh, our organization were uh, spokespersons for the Buy Nothing Day in Sweden, and then like. The White Monday was born two weeks before Black Friday in Sweden in 2017. And they managed to um, get 30 bodies, like companies, organizations, or influencers supporting the campaign. Yeah. And the uh, campaign hashtag was exposed to 6 million million times. And I saw this campaign. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is the solution <laughs> for Black Friday's overconsumption. We have to we have to be in this. It's, it's a really good campaign. I told you I'm very passionate about PR and communication. So I called Henning up and we had a meeting and I was like, hey, we should we should we should organize this together with you. You have a company. We have an organization. We're really good at PR. 
it will be huge. And he's like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> both. <laughs> like, and I'm like, okay, okay. But then actually, a few months later, he called me and he said, hey, Alexandra, I need your help. And I'm like, great. Whoa. <laughs> and then in 2018, it spread um, from 30 buddies to over 160 buddies. And wow. the campaign hashtag uh, was exposed tw over 25 million times. There was like thousands of shares, thousands of articles, and it spread even to Finland. Finland was the first country to pick it up, even though we didn't like strive for it. Okay. So it was a huge success in 2018. Uh, and then afterwards, we were sitting planning 2019 and I was like we have to we have to keep the momentum here we have to uh, keep the PR value for this campaign so and, and Henning said yeah yeah so maybe we should spread it to the Nordic and I'm like no let's go global all in all in let's do it all in <laughs> yeah let's do it all in so the results for 2019 was it spread to 23 countries with over 550 buddies and uh, the uh, what what we what we could measure was that the campaign hashtag was exposed over seventy four million times. Wow! 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 But, That's a crazy number. Yeah, it's it's a, I I cannot grasp it. That's how crazy it is. <laughs> yes. Well, well done, really. Thank you. I like, like, and, and what we need to remember here is like White Monday is a um, campaign built on a participatory model so it's not thanks to me nor Henning it's thanks to all of us who work with the campaign all the organizations influencers and companies supporting the white Monday campaign it's thanks to like all of us that it spread so worldwide because um yeah yeah now, I can I can imagine the the, the big work behind it because mm -hmm. the numbers are increasing in a crazy way every year so how many are you like working from the from let's say from the Swedish Association how mm -hmm. how big is the team and how do you manage the work we are a really small team uh, it's uh, me and the communication manager Jonna she's responsible of the social media and then we have some volunteers and also the board helping out uh, but a pretty small team from two to ten people, I'd say. Uh, but then there's Henning uh, as well. But then we have like these um, very uh, motivated people who wants to help out a little bit more. Like we've had some help with the PR work from Kirs Communication. We had some help with the, um, a new website um, and the graphics and also you know when we have conferences or kickoff then we have some help from um, um what do you call it not a room <laughs> what do you call a big big room where you hold where you the hold? venue yeah like, like the venue yeah yeah <laughs> and it goes on and on so like we're many people in the team i'd say and even if like uh, the companies or influencers are not like in the team team they're they're the key to the su success and then we also have like initiators all around the world uh, who who is responsible of initiating the campaign in their country because you know there's no way that we can do it all from sweden like it's a yeah. model yeah it's very great i see i guess because the approach is very valuable so everyone just want to be part of this mm. story i hope so yeah, and what's the plan for the next uh, for this year, 2020? Uh, me and Henning are actually going to meet next week, probably digitally now yes. to plan for 2020. But uh, I, I, yeah, I think I can share this. The plan, <laughs> <laughs> the plan is like, like uh, the organization I'm working for. We've been uh, charged of the PR. PR, for instance, uh, but this year we might be heading in the direction like we let the PR loose, like we let everything loose, uh, mm. give the frames, and then people, creative people all around the world could just take this 
within the frames, of course, and then do their own thing about it. Like to join the campaign, you don't have to communicate about it in a specific way. You can communicate. The only, the only rules for joining is one, you have to say no to Black Friday. Okay. <laughs> you have to share a post with the hashtag White Monday on social media on White Monday. This year is the 23rd of November, I think, the Monday before Black Friday. And then number three, if you want to put up a circular offer on the website, uh, then it has to be 100% circular. But anyone can support the campaign and anyone can join. Like, But you have to follow these this room so it's open for everyone every single person on this planet could be part of this yes and every single company and every single organization the only thing you have to do you have to say no to black friday don't do anything under the banner black friday black friday is like white monday is the solution yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's that's really great but tell me so it's not only addressed to the individuals and the societies, even for the organization, company, for the like uh, stores, markets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's but it's created for the consumer. You know, yeah. you and I are consumers or maybe circulants. Yes. We're going to talk about that, but we, we live our everyday life. We, we hear in the news for the past two and a half years or maybe longer that we have to change the way we consume. We have to change the way that we live for for a sustainable future, basically. But uh, it's so easy, you know, to um, buy and shop the same way you've always done. And you know you have to change, but maybe you don't have the time to, to answer the question how you can change. Uh, so uh, White Monday is publishing, you know, circular deals and circular offers on white monday so you can still buy the things you need um on white monday with a good conscience basically so it's created for individuals in that sense but it's it's also turning into this huge movement i mean the ikea group in in, in sweden supported uh white monday now uh, in 2019 and that's that's a huge step i'd, I'd say they also have this goal and vision to be circular in the future. Yes, that's amazing. But Alexandra, tell me now, what do you mean literally by a circular consumption? <clears throat> what do I literally mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, but circular consumption is a way to consume that's not contributing to waste. It's like you can share you can rent, you can upcycle, recycle, you can repair your stuff, or you can buy stuff that it's made of 100% circular, no, recyclable materials. Do you know that like last year in the Nordic Gap, Gap Report, do you know if you would guess how many percent of everything that's produced, how many percent do you think is made out of uh, circular um resources materials okay that's tough i 30 percent only nine actually okay that's really sad yeah that's really sad but the positive aspect of that is like there's this huge possibility here to create to, to change the numbers but also to create um growth and profit of course by um oh there's this Swedish word for I showed with my fingers too. Uh, what 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 is English in English word here? To um mm, change the way you do business into yeah. a circular one. Yeah. But so because when I'm reading in the newspaper or listening, it's there's a lot of talks about linear economy or consumption and then um a shared economy yeah. or consumption and then a circular what's the difference between the shared one and the circular one or are they the same no they're not the same but they're part of each other i'd say a shared economy is like you 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 share stuff like i'm, I'm not 100 percent sure about the 100 percent accurate uh description here but yeah <laughs> but like 
I would say circular consumption and economy is broader because uh, circular consumption, it's not only sharing or renting, it's, it's also buying stuff from 100% uh, recycled materials. Do you, do you see what I mean? They, they're part yeah, of exactly. the yeah. broader, I'd say. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And how do you see, are people open to circular economy? Do you have like any statistic or how do you see the different companies producing different products? Are we willing to step in circular consumption? I really think we am. Like this Nordic Gap report that I was talking about earlier shows that like the millennials, the younger uh, generation, for instance, they're they have a higher demand for circular and digital options. I call this generation for the no bullshit generation, and that's wow. uh, the uh, the future uh, consumers or circular. <laughs> like they they're the ones who 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 will set the demands in a way so the companies have to adapt and i really think especially now like with corona and everything like the whole society in a way shuts down and and stops and it's a way for us all to go inside and you know think about like what type of society do i want what type of what type of future do i want for for this earth like and so yes my long answer is yes i think we're ready for um a circular future and yeah society i i totally agree with you especially i love the name you you gave to the generation that no bullshit generation because uh, for me i live in stockholm and every friday i go for friday for future with the, the kids with greta and the <laughs> others and when i see them i'd be like okay they're no no kidding with these kids you know no. like you can you can you cannot just uh, play around no the truth is the truth and they they know this is the the beautiful thing about this the new generation they they know everything and they know which which way is the sustainable way yeah no bullshit there's no green washing no pink washing like you can't do it you need to be transparent you need to be willing to do to make the change and you need to be able to answer the questions and the demands that they have yeah and, and i think it's not only like the younger generation the no bullshit generation i think it's I think it's in all of us and I think it will spread more and more and more. We've seen this change. I mean, I, I remember four years ago when I was standing like sitting in the TV in the morning sofa speaking about, yeah, um, for this Black Friday, don't buy anything, like join the buy nothing day. And I was, I was a little bit, you know, people were uh, not really ready for that message always. I was a little weird you know <laughs> yeah and, yeah yeah and now like during during these years ever since the ipcc report i'd say there's been this massive massive change and also with the greta and and the fridays for future like it's it's hap it's all happening so fast right now yes but uh, until this generation grows up and take over the now generation do you think that the adults are also already in the circular consumption or in between? No, they're not already there. A few of us are, uh, but uh, I think many is in the middle. People are asking themselves questions before they buy stuff, but then then a huge part of, uh, of the society is not there. They're in like the same, uh, the same, way or routine road that they've been uh, for for a while but I'm I think it's I think it's gonna be really interesting to see like when we see the effects for instance on the environment now with uh, with corona for, for instance like I think it's gonna be really interesting to see like <clears throat> what, what what change would this lead to because there there's this uh, meme going around you know online like i don't know it 100 percent, but it's like they told us that we cannot just shut down everything uh 
uh, in the society to protect the climate. And then Mother Earth is like um, replying, here's the virus practice. <laughs> That's really it's really funny, you know. Yeah. But do you think do you think um, now with the coronavirus is a, a sign for all the people on this planet? Okay, wake up, reflect about your lifestyle. And do you think after the corona, when it's gone, we're gonna change or we're gonna continue with the same lifestyle and just consume and produce? No, I I think like. I think like an outcome of the coronavirus is just exactly what you said, like that the positive, the positive aspect I can see from it is like that we all can go inside and like ask ourselves, what, what are we doing? And I am a true believer, <laughs> a true like optimist. So I do, I do believe we're going to see a massive, massive change. And I'm, I'm hoping for that and I'm striving for that, but like it all depends like are we gonna are we gonna start to act from our hearts like like where because while the mind thinks you know the heart knows like if we ground our decisions our logical decisions in our heart then we can and truly start to act from that moral aspect then i do think i really do think that we're going to see uh, a positive change but yeah. there are negative sides, of course, from this, you know, with the, the businesses and entrepreneurs, of course. Uh, but some some changes are very painful, but they, they're also maybe necessary, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very inspire, inspiring. And also, I can speak about myself, like already now, the corona is not gone yet, but I already start to reflect about okay, the people I meet, the, the lifestyle, the food, you know, already now, even if I did it before, but now it's, it's, it's more serious. And I believe That's also cool. after, yeah, after, after the Corona, everyone is okay. It, it, it's serious. We need to take care. We need to reflect about our, our beliefs, lifestyle, people we meet, food we eat, the, the, the way we consume. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the output of Corona, unfortunately, not only the, the death, and all the sad story but also there is some positive things and let's hope for the good time yeah i, I truly hope i truly hope for that and i i can also see it you know because um, i i have a i have a quote that i usually say like i have to i have to think positive i have to see the silver lining like that's just just the type of person i am but i usually say like why follow the stream when we can start the wave? Wow. You know? okay. Yes, yes, this is very deep. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that's great quote. I, I need to take it. Yeah, do it. Reflect <laughs> about it. Yeah, it's really great. Uh, talking about quotes and uh, words, you, you, you officially, you have a uh, circular, uh, the Swedish word. Mm -hmm. Big it, yes, yes. Yeah, tell me more about it. So we uh, last summer we co came up with this word like uh, a true sustainable consumer is a circulant and uh, circulant in Swedish it goes in English too a circulant like and that's uh, and we officially launched it now just bef just in the outbreak of Corona <laughs> uh, because on the March 15 it was the International Consumers Day and this year's topic was the sustainable consumer and then we said like no uh, a consumer is the uh, outdated uh, circulant is the future but of course uh, to be a circulant to rent to repair, to upcycle, to share, to buy recycled stuff is of course a part of the cake of being a consumer, but we do believe like this is the future. Yeah, but when you talk about circulant, you all focus on the consumer. How about the producer? Are you like addressing something to them or no? Your focus is all in to the consumer. Like in the organization where I work, it's like it's a consumer based organization. But of course, like uh, we give tips and advices, we hold lectures and workshops for the producers. Like, this is what the consumers and the future circulants want. Uh, this is how you can um, 
and make the change uh, to more circular business models. And there, we also give tips and advices like uh, uh, this company or this organization can help you more. There's, uh, uh, we, we, we've also like the organization of members and bigger uh, cooperations between uh, stakeholders for making the, the change. But our like of public or official uh, way of communicating is to the consumer. Because, yeah. That's yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. So if I understand you correctly, you you helping as well the producer in case they ask you to to yeah. okay you with your expertise what what the does the consumer want and how do we make our model or our production line more sustainable and more circular? Exactly. Like for instance, now in May uh, we're going. Uh, maybe perhaps to Moscow for the uh, Russian network of the UN Global Compact to speak like to speak exactly about this or we will probably take it digitally now but yeah that, that that's what we do well that's great well um you know every story has a, a dark side or a bit of a drama in it so yeah. I, I'm interested in the and the oh I'm interested in the circular model as well but tell me more, like what are the challenges or the disadvantages with the circular, with the circular consumption? Is there any like? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, like, like studies have shown and not all, all is talking about it, but like eventually our cir all circular stuff will become bit waste. That's an aspect that we need to keep in mind. But what do we do with that waste? And also a lot of circular uh, options or circular consumption is also digital. But another aspect of the digital is like uh, it demands a lot of uh, energy for yeah. the storage, for instance. So there are challenges and backsides here, but it's the better alternative still compared to linear consumption compared to the let's just shop and throw th throw it shop and throw it kind of living um i don't know so there there are not so positive aspe aspects as well but if we talk about it um if we address it then these ideas and these creative solutions will also come up i think yeah yeah. What what are the, the biggest challenges for you? Like you're working to, to promote the circular consumption. What do you see the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge for promote circular consumption. Like this is a challenge for the organization, but it's also, you know, um, a reason for hope because there are a lot of us, a lot of organizations and influencers and companies speaking about this now so challenge for us is like to reach out you know with our yeah men. because if you look at the global goals the number 17 is built on partnerships we have to start viewing each other as co-creators and not concurrents basically if we as we do in white monday work together or the launch of the word circling if we do it together then we reach out massively but if yeah. everyone is trying to do it for themselves then yeah the chance of that is not as high yeah 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 the, the i guess in, in in many businesses or many campaigns about the the, the co-collaboration and because the message is for all the planet and you just want to do it by your own so you're never gonna succeed yeah, with that way. you know yeah that's the old way i, I i'd say but so tell me, do you have like a potential list of uh, partners that you wanted to co collaborate with them? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, uh, we have that. Do you mean for the organization or? Yes, or... like in general, like if you want to, if you're aiming to the private sector, to, to the private sector or to influencer or to the like uh, municipalities, governments. Like right now, like we aim, this is my biggest, <laughs> my biggest flaw. Actually, I'm not the right person to ask this because, you know, in the board, we're talking about that we have to, that we have to, you know, 
pick a target group. And I'm like, everybody is a target group. That's a reasonable target group. And they're Alexander like, Davidson, either take it all or not. <laughs> and they're like, no, we have to choose. And I'm like, okay, I need to kill my darlings. <laughs> but right now, we were actually a really small organization. Like we don't have a lot of eco economic muscles. Like we are doing a lot, but we don't really have the funds to do more. And we have started this wave and we have to surf on it. And for that, we, we need to expand, we need to grow. And one thing that we do is selling workshops and lectures for companies, municipalities, the public, and, and, and that sort of stuff. But now with the corona and everything happening, we're challenged there. We're like, oh shit, what are we gonna do? Yeah. You know, we also have to, we also have to change, but that's our that's our biggest challenge right now. Like, how are we going to survive this? Uh, we need to work more with donors, for instance. If you'd like to support the organization, please do. I want to keep yeah. my job. <laughs> I want to keep on making a page. Yeah, you know? of course. I, I, I believe there are many actors outside that looking forward to collaborate with your association and move toward the sustainable the, the 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 real sustainability the real sustainable planet not only by you know now it's everyone showing the beautiful uh, colors of this sdgs you know but not really working to achieve them but i believe now people are more serious yeah people are going to be uh, more as the no bullshit generation like yeah it's true basically and feel what they resonate with and what they don't resonate with i mm. think yeah. yeah well uh, alexandra you're informing and promoting circular, circular consumption and this affect the city in the in the large scale mm -hmm. well if i ask you what is a smart city for you that's a really really good question like what is a smart city uh my my first response to that that is like i don't know <laughs> i have no idea but then I think a little bit more about it and I'm like, maybe it's a city that, that promote, um, not promotes, but maybe have the infrastructure for a more circular consumption and a more local based society and the, the locals demands for that city rather than a global one. And the global perspective is, of course, really, really prominent and, and important. But a smart city is a city who makes this future where we need to head, and the future of where we all live within the boundaries of one Earth. That's a smart city. Yeah, so for you, it's about the, the, the infrastructure that support the local production and consumption, right? Yes. Yeah. But also, you know, the digital one for the global consumption as well. But the smart city is one that provides the infrastructure for a sustainable future. Yeah, great. And do you think now we are living in a, a kind of smart city if we talk about Stockholm? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a kind of smart city, I'd say. Um, it's it's a, it's a good city uh, for growth and popping popping ideas and solutions I'd say, uh, but we're not fully there yet. But I I think that I think that it could be like a city in the future, um, uh, which is a maybe an inspiration perhaps. Uh, yeah. Because we're, 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 we're very open for collaborations and uh, trading ideas and, you know, finding solutions in creative ways. So, yeah, we're not there, but maybe kind of ish. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I also, because I'm working with the um, city planning and I work in Stockholm and I see there are many actors that are willing to experiment new things, different models, but then they're they don't have the mood to continue. And this is, I think, the challenge that someone needs to really do it. And we cannot just keep workshopping and no. uh, developing theoretical models. We need like really to go for it. And it's it's not, it cannot be done just by the municipality. Like it should be different uh, mm -hmm. actors 
to go for this. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe in, in, in the future, I believe that it's going to be similar to the smart city you describe. But it's, it's a bit difficult because of the weather and infrastructure. But hopefully, yes, hopefully, yes, with a new generation and with the super seniors, because that time we're going to be seniors, right? Yeah, that, that, then we will be seniors. <laughs> That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, Alexander, what is the next uh, step for you? If I like both as a person and also for the association. OK, for the association, it's like um, growth, like building, building uh, the uh, the ways to to ride on this, to surf on this wave, basically, to and that's that's like that's a real really challenge like i as a leader i have to i have to find the ways for this with together with the board and and my team uh but that's what we have to do we have to we have to survive and we have to grow uh, and we also want to continue to make white monday you know even bigger for 2020 and uh, we also want that word circulant to uh, be part of the swedish dictionary wow. that's where we go uh, so we have big goals and uh, smaller goals. Of course. But tell me, tell me about the on the Swedish dictionary. Do you do you need to apply for something, or how is it going to be? What's the the process? The key is for people to use it. So uh -huh. please start using the word circulant, like use the hashtag or not, but just start just start using it. Like it's uh, if you think it's a good word, then communicate about it. It's a beautiful. It's a beautiful word. I will. You know, you know what the name of this episode is gonna be circular. Ah, I love it. We push for it. it, yeah. And how is it going? What's the next step for Alexandra as a person? The next step for me as a person, mm, it's hard for me to divide from my private life and my work life, um, and because it did, what I do doesn't feel like it work, but. For me, I, I I would like to become the leader that the organization needs for making this growth. And I, as on a personal level, I want to continue to live in a more uh, circular and sustainable way because I'm not perfect. Like I'm not 100% there myself. And I want to continue learn and continue making the changes in my everyday life. Like for instance, my project right now is deodorant. <laughs> I'm this weekend, I'm going to create my own deodorant okay. without any harmful substances in it. Um, Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> cool. And tell me, how, how do we follow uh, the campaign on the social media? And uh... mm, You can follow the campaign uh, on Instagram, like White Monday 2020, or hashtag Surfland or hashtag White Monday. You can go follow us uh, on our Instagram, medvetenkonsumtion.se. Um, and um, yeah. Or, or or our website like we're pretty much everywhere not not so much on twitter though yeah yeah great and the and on these platforms um, if some actor wants to collaborate with you it's just easy to write you and that that's it right yes of course and also there we have this uh, if you're interested in white monday then go into white monday.info there you can sign up to uh, to join as a buddy and uh, you you can find the answers to pretty much all of your questions. Yes, that's amazing. Well, Alexander, it was a, a, a really great episode. So much inspiration, interesting talk. Now it's you have it. You have like the, the last two questions, yeah. which feels like it might feels big. So the first one is if you summarize what we talk about and your thoughts in three takeaway messages, what mm -hmm. are these takeaways? Mm -hmm. Why follow this dream when we can create the wave of a circular and sustainable future? Uh, use the word and spread the word uh, circulant. Join us for uh, making the spread of White Monday. And I also like to thank you. Like this was, this is my second podcast interview, I think. And, and like, I cannot, I cannot understand how fast the time goes. Like they're really thoughtful and interesting questions that really brings out this energy within me. So I'd like to thank you for inviting me 
and for making such a good uh, interview. Well, thank you so much, Alexandra. I was really happy when I, uh, to be honest, uh, before I didn't really know about you, but when I I read the cir circular, circular, circulant. Circulant, yeah. Yes. So I was like, oh my God. Oh, oh, what is this magic? So I went and it was on LinkedIn and, be like, and I, I saw your name. I'd be like, okay, this person I need to talk to because this person is a leader, a great leader. And thank you so much. Like during all the process, I just wrote to you and you, you were so positive. And I, I was really happy from the first moment I texted you. And now we can really see that there's a lot of energy and we just continue with it, hopefully after the podcast as well. Yeah, yeah, I truly hope so. Yes. Uh, the following your work is really, really encouraging, I must say. Thank you so much. But uh, for this work need to be more work done, I need three hashtags from you to tag <laughs> this. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know, I cannot, I cannot do everything like the, the material, the production, the editing of the sound and so on. So if someone needs to help me. So now you're the, the stage is yours. Three hashtags, Alexandra. Okay. Hashtag Alexandra Davidson. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> you should use um, hashtag circulant, hashtag white Monday, and hashtag responsible consumption. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Alexandra, one more time. Thank you so much. And thank you for uh, listening or watching Urbanistica podcast slash talks uh, don't forget to follow the different accounts we mentioned during this episode and and also follow the urbanistica podcast on instagram linkedin and the different podcast platforms if you have any great story to tell if you think your story is not worth to tell it might be worth to tell and change people's life on this planet well have a good time i am mustafa sharif and this is urbanistica podcast